with the first pick. With the second pick. With the third pick. With the fourth pick. Crashing the boards. Select. So we'll move on to my favorite guy on this show. On this particular episode, and maybe, like I said at the top, um, maybe maybe my favorite guy that will break down totally. And he's a guy you may not have heard of. He's a guy that doesn't pop up on many mock drafts, uh, if any. I'm not sure I've seen him on one yet. Um, and Jordan, we we can talk about that in a minute. But he's Jacory McLaughlin, six foot four, 190 pound combo guard out of UC Santa Barbara. This last season averaged 16 points per game. 5.2 assists to 1.96 turnovers, which is a really, really nice ratio. Uh, 3.4 rebounds, 48% from the field, 40% from three on 3.9 attempts, and 83% from the free throw line. Now, I want to give folks a little bit of a background on Jacory here. So, yes, he's a mid-major player. He spent a couple of years at UC Santa Barbara. But if you go back to his high school career, he was a four-star recruit out of Seattle, Seattle area. He averaged 10 and a half points and three assists in his freshman year at Oregon State. Um, so he, he ended up uh, play. He, he did play in the Pac-12 for a year, did a nice job um, as a freshman. Uh, ultimately, he redshirted it, uh, redshirted, that's a tough word to say, redshirted his <laughs> sophomore year uh, and then transferred to UC Santa Barbara. And he started every game for three years there. So um Jordan, another one of those guys, he's super consistent. Um, and he is a guy that uh, I'd be comfortable putting the ball in his hands in, in most situations. Yeah, I, I put trust for like the main positive with him. And as a facilitator, he's extremely mature, accurate passes. He takes care of the basketball. Um, he makes advanced reads. He's an elite decision maker, like one of the better ones in this class. And it's ridiculous that he's not popping up in mock drafts I'm sure we'll elaborate on that point here in a minute and as a scorer he's diverse he can do a little bit of everything I think um, he can score he can play off the ball a little bit um, and get open that way he has really good poise and pacing he's he just seems in control and you can say that about a lot of guys but it truly applies with him um, he sets up his moves in succession he you can tell he puts in the work in the gym he just looks comfortable out there and fluid and in control and happy to be out there. Um, good body control around the rim, good shooter. He's efficient. Like there, there's nothing to not like, I think about him offensively, he, whether he has the ball in his hands, looking to pass or looking to put the ball in the basket. Yeah. His highlight reel uh, just passes alone are, are pretty incredible. There's some flashy mm -hmm. ones. There's some, uh, some passes you don't expect anyone to make, uh, you know, through traffic, uh, skip passes, passes from under the bucket to the other side of the the three point line. Just some some wild stuff that he's able to do passing the ball. But he's a legitimate three level scorer as well. He's got a really smooth and comfortable release from deep. Um, again, around four attempts per game. Shot forty percent from the the three point line. Mid range game. We'll roll some clips now. Uh, super smooth mid range game. He knows how to get open. You mentioned that already. Um, he knows how to get that shot and he's confident, comfortable, and will pull it quick when he's got the space. And then as far as finishing at the rim goes, same thing. Like he is, he's comfortable. He's got a nice frame, six foot four, 190 pounds, probably by draft time. I'd assume he'll put in enough work to get up to 200, 205, maybe. Mm -hmm. um, he can finish too. And so he mixes that scoring ability with that advanced ability to read defenses. And we're talking about, uh, potentially a really good long-term NBA point guard. Can't, why not? We're calling him a combo guard, but um, when, when you talk about uh, his role in an NBA team, handling the ball, handling the offense, facilitating, initiating, etc. And it's crazy that we're saying all of that. And we say it about guys that are first round picks. This is a guy who we both think should go and probably will go at some point in the second round. The mock drop sites don't have him on their radar at all. Like if you even look up scouting reports on him, there's Pretty like empty. two out there. I yeah. looked and I was like, this is, it, it's sad. He's such a good player. Um, he has so many good qualities that NBA teams will like. And I think that that will separate from um, the scouting process from the amateur scouts and just the people 
um, sitting at home watching versus the NBA teams that get to sit down and meet with him and talk to him and break down his game further. There's a lot to like. I'm sure he's not an elite athlete. Like if you really have to nitpick to find things that he's a mid-major player, like you really have to sit and think of reasons why he's not going to be a productive NBA player, not necessarily a great one, but if you're getting value in that second round, you're getting a decade long backup point guard that you can trust to come in and do the right thing. There is a ton of value in that, I think. Yeah, man. So, so let me ask you this. It brings up a good point. We're not finished breaking down to Corey quite yet, but I want to, I want a little sidebar here. What is your process when it comes to evaluating prospects, not specific prospects, but just scouting college basketball in general and finding some guys like what, what's your process? I'm kind of like you. I try not to look at the numbers first. Like if I hear about a player, I'll just go watch them and I'll kind of see um, what I do. Especially I'll make a football reference. I try to watch one good game, um, one bad game, and then a couple average ones just to kind of see, because you can watch a good game or a highlight reel and say, Oh, this guy could be really good, but is every game going to be like that? Not necessarily. Um, Then conversely, you can watch a bad game and say, this guy's not going to be good at all but not every game is going to be like that. So kind of just diversifying the mix of um, not watching the highlight reel because you can make any player look really good from that. Um, Seeing, noting like four or five things that they have like go to. And that's the thing with Ja'Cory. He doesn't really have a lot of one trick type things that he does. Like if you're writing good things that he does, it's everything. It's passing um, with poise. It's being composed. It's finding his own space it's creating his own shot it's attacking the rim it's three-point shooting it's taking care of the basketball it's so much then after that um i try not to list a ton of negatives for players and we call them question marks because ultimately they are question marks and they're things that could turn into positives um throughout that draft process throughout an nba career then you go through and do that but by the time you have all the good stuff there you've already built a case for that prospect and you kind of go from there. Um, so I think that it just part of it's word of mouth because a lot of people, anyone watching this, maybe they haven't heard of Jacory before. And they say, oh, well, I'll go watch him. Um, and part of it is just kind of going out and doing it. I, and that kind of applies to everything, but it's it's a good mix of both, I think. Yeah, it, mine's mine's similar to that. So so I'll take you to preseason before this before the year even starts. Uh, I sit down, I look at all my notes from the year before, uh, all my scouting notes, and I see which guys are coming back that I've I've put stars next to, guys that I like. Uh, which guys are coming back? That co- goes for mid majors, it goes for major conferences, it goes for some G League guys and some international guys, right? So I I check those out. I say, okay, these guys are coming back. Got to watch their games, etc. Then I actually go back to last year's conference, um, all, all conference awards. So first first team through third team or whatever they have, newcomers of the year, freshman teams, whatever it is. Um, and at that point, I'll look at some numbers. If they're mid-major guys, I'll kind of say, okay, this guy was a freshman of the year. Uh, what did he do? Uh, all right, these are some numbers that kind of pop out. Um, and then I'll watch his tape from the year before, and I'll decide, okay, this is a guy I'm going to watch this year. This is a guy, maybe not, whatever. For Ja'Cory, I'm not going to pretend I'm the first guy to ever discover Ja'Cory McLaughlin. There's no chance uh, that's the case. But I, I went back and I looked at um, you know, his conferences, all conference teams. I saw, okay, this guy's six foot four, point guard, did a lot of really good things, great assist to turnover ratio. I pull him up, I watch his tape from last year, like, wow, he's good. Watch some film this year. Like that's that's how I uh, that's that's kind of how I became a Ja'Cory McLaughlin fan. I think a lot of people will look at mock drafts. <laughs> Honestly, I think yeah. they they look they, at they mock do. drafts. They look they look at players not one through sixty, but maybe one through seventy or eighty, and they're like, oh, okay, these guys are pretty good. And that's how guys get overlooked. Um, you know, Ja'Cory's not popping out to anyone because he's not he's not on all these mock drafts, and people are missing a really really good player. And um, it's a shame, but I'm glad we. I'm glad you're watching our show now. I'm glad you get to watch his clips and, and hear what we have to say about him. Yeah, and I'm trying to think of how I want to phrase this. It it doesn't go one through sixty. Like a lot of people will watch or I guess read and say, "Oh, those are the top sixty players in this year's draft." And there's 
there's no debate about it. Like that's it. Yeah. Bleacher Reporter, whoever did their mock draft, those are the 60 players to watch for. Um, and that's how it's going to go. And even in football, baseball, all this stuff, those rankings or those mock drafts, something is going to happen where it deviates from what is listed. Either someone's going to quote unquote reach, which I hate that word. Um, or somebody's going to fall due to something we may not even know about um, that happened throughout the draft process or just bad luck or whatever happens. Guys are going to go that aren't on lists and guys may not go that are on lists. That's just how it goes. So if you do the homework and, and find the guys that you like, and I like what you said about going through the all conference teams, because that is a really easy way to screen through guys that may have slipped under the radar, like Ja'Cory. Mm. Um, and I didn't even think about that. So I'm definitely going to copy off of you and, and start doing that. Do it. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. So um, let's get back to Jacory for a second. Some question marks. Um, there are a few, just like with any guy, like if there were yeah. no question marks, we'd be talking about Jacory in the top five, right? Like that's just how it works. Um, but these are truly question marks as well. We haven't seen elite burst from him. Um, and we've talked about it in other shows. Sometimes that's just a product of, uh, the system they run in. Sometimes that maybe is a problem, uh, that maybe they don't have that burst. I've seen some flashes from Jacory of, of burst. Um, we've seen him make defenders pay for falling asleep, put a foot wrong. Um, Jacory goes past you. So perhaps a question mark, um, the, the burst one V one defending will be interesting as well. And, Again, we just haven't seen that athleticism at, at a, a really elite level. Maybe that's a product of who he's playing against as well, right? And, and again, I, no no slight to, to mid-major teams. There are a lot of mid-major guys and teams and coaches that I really, really like. Um, but again, you wonder, how, how is he going to do against the elite athleticism? Um, very athletic NBA guards. Uh, but one thing you can hang your hat on, if you're a Jacory fan, he's got a high IQ. He's got a, a great understanding of the game. Um, you know, he's he's got a great support system as well. I, I noticed, uh, well, Seattle Seattle basketball players really like to lift each other up, whether it's uh, younger Isaiah Thomas or Jamal Crawford or whoever it may be. Um, and, and it seems like a lot of a lot of those Seattle guys really embrace Jacory. And um, you know, I I think that. <laughs> I really think he's going to be a, a long time NBA player. I really do. Yeah, I think so too. And those were my two question marks as well. Um, and I read an article that brought up, I wish I remembered what the, the rating was for defense. And I don't really put much stock into defensive ratings and he was above average, but to that point, the system, who knows the athleticism, who knows, like that's a big jump to go from that to the NBA. I'm um, nothing against mid majors at all. Like you said, I love mid majors, but it has to be noted that that is a significant leap that he's going to be making. And he does show flashes of having really quick feet and he knows where he needs to be. And I think that will help him. He can anticipate things that are going to happen and he can yeah. react extremely quick, um, has the great IQ. So that always makes up for it in any sport, at least a little bit. But um, in those situations where you will need that, does he have it? And he's shown flashes that he might. And if he doesn't, I think you're still getting a reliable player. But if he does, then maybe that raises the ceiling even more. Yeah. And for everyone that says, well, he did it all against mid-major teams. Like, listen, we already mentioned it. He was able to do it as a freshman in the Pac-12 as well. Yeah. So um, please, in every argument you ever make, do not bring up what level these of basketball these guys are playing in. And if you do, I've got no time for you. <laughs> Let's talk about the tape. Let's talk about what they do well, what they don't do well. Let's not talk about who they're playing against, please. Anyway. Yeah. <laughs> Jordan, let me get your summary of Ja'Cory McLaughlin. I wrote down for my summary that I was going to kick it back to you because I know <laughs> if anyone can summarize him, it's going to be you. Ja'Cory has all the tools, right? The summary is not just on paper, but on tape. This guy can navigate a defense. He can facilitate. He can score. He can basically do anything you need him to do. We haven't seen him play off the ball a ton, but I think he'll be able to do that as well uh, if needed. And so this is a really, really solid pick. It's a guy that his ceiling maybe is all-star, but you know, to, to make sure we're not 
spouting off a bunch of hot takes here. <laughs> I, I think it's safe to say that Jacory will be a long time pro mm-hmm. um, and, and a really, really good pro. Yeah, I think so too. And he's just reliable. And sometimes every team needs that guy, whether it's coming off the bench, whether it's in the starting lineup, whether it's in the locker room. I mean, he's going to get on the court. I have no doubts about that. That guy that can just do the right thing and be where he's supposed to be and buy into winning. And if he dominates the ball, it's going to be the best ball dominant like team minutes you're going to find. He's not a guy that dances around a lot and wastes dribbles and isn't a great passer. If he has the ball, he is purposeful with it. He's going to score. He's going to set himself up to score, or he's going to set his teammate up to score. And that's just how he plays. Um, Really selfless player. And I think he's going to be good. I mean, there's, there's no reason why he can't be good. Even if he doesn't have that elite athleticism, even if he's a, average defender or even a slight minus he's still going to be a good player and last thing i'll say really really nice kid really mm-hmm. really nice guy um and, and yeah i'm really looking forward to seeing what jacory does buy stock now we're telling you we're begging you buy jacory mclaughlin stock uh you're gonna see his name soon no no question yep. jordan that's our three guys trey man Io Desunmu and Jacory McLaughlin. That's episode four. Final thoughts? It's in the books, man. Um, there, there was some behind the scenes stuff that led to us kind of getting a late uh, recording done. Um, but man, it, it's been a blast so far. And I think that as we keep doing this, um, shedding more light on prospects that it, people are going to start catching on to it even more. Um, and these guys, they all need light shed on them they all need to be talked about They're They're in that conversation for a reason. Um, some more than others, but it, it's been a fun process. Absolutely. And speaking of shedding light on some guys next week, make sure you join us. We got two guys that you've probably heard of Scotty Barnes, Jonathan Kaminga, uh, both really good players. And we're going to actually talk about two other prospects. Um, we'll talk about international prospect friends, Blyenberg, who is uh, he's a pretty good player. And he's kind of mock draft wise. Some have him second rounds. I've seen some that have him the very last pick, some that don't have him at all. But um, he's a good player, an interesting prospect. And then we're going to talk about a guy that didn't even play Division One basketball, uh, Division One NCAA basketball anyway. Um, and you know what? I'm going to keep his name a secret. I'm just going to use it as a teaser. Come check us out there you go. next week. Four <laughs> prospects with one uh, that you've almost definitely never heard of. Until then. Stay right, stay real. God bless. With the first pick. With the second pick. With the third pick. With the fourth pick. Crashing the boards. Select.